All right, you know local schools have been through all kinds of things. Schools across the nation have seen a surge in threats since the deadly shooting in Georgia. Triad area schools dealing with that too. How are leaders navigating this new threat cycle? Plus, there's a lot of new construction happening in Guilford County schools, but there are still a lot of old systems that we have to deal with. HVAC issues are once again a focus. We're going to talk about that. And while the new school year just started, you need to be thinking about next year, how you can find the best fit for your student at the Choice Showcase this fall. So tonight, Guilford County School Superintendent Dr. Whitney Oakley is joining us live to talk about these things and anything else you can think of. In fact, we're inviting you to ask your question today. You can text your question. The number is 336-379-5775 and you can get your answer in real time. All right, so let's start with this because the threats against schools, mm -hmm. real and fake, have become just a problem mm -hmm. all around the nation. And of course, we're seeing that in triad schools as well. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what kind of threats we're receiving, how we're handling that, what parents need to know about it. Yeah, I think um, the most important thing to understand is that all threats are taken seriously, whether it's an online or a copycat from another county or another state, which our whole country is seeing, not just here. Um, we're seeing here what everybody's seeing um, in, since the aftermath of, of what happened in Georgia. So every single um, threat that we receive is taken seriously and is fully investigated in partnership with law enforcement agencies. And so we have systems in place in schools for those um, threats to be investigated, reported, and followed up on as quickly as possible so that families have information as quickly as possible. We do want to make sure though that we remind people that reposting a threat that may not be credible sometimes um, causes more damage, right? So we want to make sure that we allow our law enforcement um, partners to fully investigate before we report that something is true just because it's posted on social media. And of course, whether it's a staff member, a student, a parent, if they see something, we want them to say something. Um, but you, we don't want yeah. them to say it on social media. We want them yeah. to not post it. We want them to report it, report which is a it. very different yes, thing. Yes, it is. Reporting instead of reposting on social media while an investigation is underway is critically important. And so sometimes misinformation spreads really quickly and then students are sharing things on their phone before the investigation is complete. Okay, let's talk about what uh, you guys are doing uh, to ensure student safety. I know there's, you know, there's uh, metal detectors mm -hmm. and there's other things in play. Yeah, lots of different ways. Um, we have installed cameras in schools. We have those um, in, in place as we begin to also have vape detectors along with cameras installed. We've taught students how to do anonymous reporting, same for teachers, same for parents if they don't feel comfortable sharing. Um, but the good news is that most students have a trusted adult in the building and if they hear anything, they go straight to that trusted adult and then the investigation can begin. So it's really, there's not a piece of equipment that can prevent any of these tragedies that have happened if you look at all of them. Um, but you can practice safety routines, safety procedures, and make sure that if you do see something, you say something. Reporting is some of the most work that, important work that we can do. I want to talk a little bit about the consequences because sometimes kids think, oh, well, I'm going to make a threat and it's just for fun or whatever else, and they don't maybe realize what the consequences are. Maybe yeah. the parents don't realize what mm -hmm. those consequences are too. Yeah, and they're taken seriously and they're issued with law enforcement. So um, there are many students who maybe have repeated a threat or said a threat that wasn't true and have face consequences, charges, um, and have not been able to return back to school. Mm -hmm. So all of those threats are taken very seriously and then the consequences are issued in partnership with law enforcement who is also taking those threats seriously and works hand in hand every day with the school district. Gotcha, okay. All right, so we just showed a glimpse of video and I wanna be able to show it again. We just did a topping out ceremony, mm -hmm. right? Last week for the last of the first uh, six schools mm -hmm. built. So we're taking a look at this. This is uh, the new visual and performing arts element elementary school. Good to see the progress mm -hmm, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, now as this wraps up, there are other questions like how does the next phase of construction look and how what about bond money and things of that nature? Yeah, so we again are so grateful to the voters for passing the bond. We have to say that every opportunity we can get and we work very closely with the county commissioners on how much money you can spend how fast, right? And so um, of course, the $2 billion that was passed um, in 2019, things cost more than they did five years ago. Gas, a trip to Lowe's, all of the things. 
Um, and so we are stretching those taxpayer dollars as far as we can. We're going in order of projects. That's posted publicly on the GCS bond dashboard in partnership with the county. And also are doing lots of deferred maintenance work. So HVAC, roofing projects, chillers. And so all of that work is underway. More than 20 HVAC projects completed this past summer. We're continuing to work down the list, but we have to remember that we're digging ourselves out of a hole. Um, and so we're gonna go as fast as we can to as many projects as we can, but that has to be in conjunction um, with the county and how those bond debts are paid off. Right, and that was kind of the next thing, the HVAC issues. Mm -hmm. uh, Northwest, uh, Northeast Guilford Middle yeah. closed for a couple of days because of those HVAC issues. Um, I think a lot of times people are wondering why can't they just fix everything mm -hmm. all at once? Um, let's talk about like some of the reasons why that is and then what you're hoping to do, especially jobs wise and yeah. who's doing all of the work. Right, so I mean, I think a couple things that we have to remember are that these projects are often complex. And so there's some things that require a part that we have in stock. There's some things that require a part that is on back order um, for, all, for all HVAC repairs. There's also cases where we have to repair a whole chiller or when you repair a new part, an older part then breaks. And so when you're dealing with very old systems, it's pretty complicated and we talk about these major repairs. We will not close school unless we can't relocate a classroom or it's impacting a whole area of the building where we can't keep school going like we had to do with Northeast. But the, the other piece is, is that we contract for most of our HVAC repairs because we can't hire HVAC people to come and work for us because of the difference in pay grade. And so I think it's important to know that um, voters will see a sales tax referendum um, this November and that um, those dollars will be used to, to make more fair compensation for our teachers and our frontline workers like our HVAC workers so that hopefully we'll be able to fairly compensate and then have those repairs done in a more timely manner and more cost effectively because as we contract it does cost us more than if we had our own folks in, in place but we have lots of vacancies in plumbing facilities maintenance HVAC. So that's a plug there if you are if you have those kinds of skills. Yes. Yes. Those jobs are open. Click on the careers tab and please come work for Guilford County Schools and when you go to vote in November, be informed about what that fraction of a penny of a sales tax would do for our teachers and frontline workers that our neighboring counties have already passed. Okay, Guilford County Schools uh, celebrating educators. They hosted the Celebration of Excellence uh, at Grimsley High School. Let's talk about that celebration. It's coming it's up. It's coming up this weekend. Yes, yes. it will be on um, September 25th. The public's mm -hmm. invited. They can go to gcsnc.com and RSVP. We'll celebrate lots of successes academically from the last school year. We'll also announce our principal of the year, teacher of the year, assistant principal of the year, counselor. It's a really good time to celebrate lots of hard work that we're starting to see the results pay off. Mm -hmm. All right, and we want to take a deeper dive into the state accountability report where schools get graded. Mm -hmm. Those um, That data came out Labor mm -hmm. Day. Um, so what do you think, what is good, and then what areas really do you think we need to focus on and work on? Yeah, I mean, I think we saw lots of positive things happen in the accountability model. We drastically reduced the number of low-performing schools, and that speaks to the hard work of our teachers and our, our school leaders, and I think that that's a lot to be proud of. We are no longer a low-performing school district. We're seeing lots of progress. We are reducing the number of Ds and F schools and increasing the number of As and B schools. Um, we saw bright spots when we looked at our high school EOCs. We saw bright spots when we looked at reading and math across grade levels and student groups. We saw increases in third grade reading that we haven't seen in quite some time. Um, when I think about what we need to work on, what sticks out the most is chronic absenteeism. Mm -hmm. So we still have lots of students that miss 10 or more days at school, and we can't do that alone. We need parents and families and community members to help us see the value of sending kids to school every day. Um, of course, we don't want students to be at school when they're sick, um, but it seems like it's just kind of easier to stay home mm -hmm. post-COVID, mm -hmm. and every single hour that we miss of school is hard to make up. And so we, we just want people to see the value in coming to school every single day. And I think that we'll be able to see that pay off in our accountability results moving forward. Okay, all right, we're just beginning the conversation. We have two more segments and we want you to ask your questions. So 336-379-5775.